I got in my car and drove to the closest market and it was such a small market in such a rural town that I didn't want to go in, right? I didn't want to go in. I didn't want to deal with those rural white people. I know the further you get away from cities and towns, bigger cities and towns, the more likely you are to run into people who feel emboldened uh, to be the worst. And so I made it my business to drive extra miles to go to a town, a bigger town, to go to their grocery store. That's not a consideration I have in Costa Rica. When you hear black women and black families talking about leaving the United States of America for another country, and your first response is, you can't give up what we're owed, uh, what do you mean by that? What exactly do you mean when you say we can't walk away from what we're owed? What do you expect to get? This is a real question that I'm asking you. What do I think is a better return, right? What do I think is a better thing that we're owed that we can get by actually leaving the United States of America? That's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Uh, what are you getting by sticking around in the U.S.? What are you getting by leaving? Do those things balance out? Is it worth it to pack your bags and your family up and leave and go to another country? Is it worth it? Uh, if you have that question, you're in the right place. If you already think you know the answer, you're probably also in the right place. I want to have this conversation with you between me talking and you putting some things in the comments. I think we're going to get a little bit of insight that I haven't had before and that maybe I'll be able to give, share a little insight with you that you don't have. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Stephanie Perry. I'm a house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School. I'm the co-founder of Exodus Summit. And on this channel, I help black women take a sabbatical or career break abroad. I help women, black women bop around the world. I help black women move abroad to a new country. If any of these things sound interesting to you, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, subscribe to this channel, please. And then turn on notifications, ring the notification bell, and you'll be notified when I post a new video or when I go live. Welcome. So like I just said, I'm the co-creator of Exodus Summit, and this is our fifth year hosting an event where we help black women move abroad, help black women primarily from the US, but also UK, Canada, move to a new country. And what we hear a lot, a piece of pushback that we get from a lot of people, in particular black women, is that you're owed something and you have to stay in this country, in the United States, until you, you're owed that thing. I wanna know what you are expecting to get. So I know what you're owed, right? You're owed some reparations. You're owed 40 acres and a mule. You're owed some, uh, some significant compensation from this country. I think um, it really surprises me how many people expect to actually receive some compensation, but also it surprises me how many people think you're nullifying what you're owed by moving someplace else. I don't think moving to another place means that you're not still owed what you're owed. I do, I am really surprised by how many people expect to get some significant compensation. States like California have started issuing reparations in some way to people. I happen to be in California now, although I'm not from California. I'm visiting. Uh, I'm in California right now, and I know that there are talks in some other places about how to issue reparations to people, but I don't think that not living in the country anymore means your people, your family, you are not still entitled to those reparations. So I don't think that's a problem. We're not talking about renouncing citizenship. We're just talking about also acquiring residency in another country, okay? Uh, it also surprises me how many black people, black women are really tied to the success of this particular empire. Right? How many people are really committed to making sure that the United States of America succeeds? S making sure that the empire makes it. Uh, we, even though the empire was specifically built to crush you, there are a lot of black women who are really committed to making sure that this thing lasts, <laughs> that this country lasts, knowing that all empires fall. And knowing that there might be something better on the other side of a rebuild, right? Or something a whole lot better when you pick up your feet and go someplace else, which is what we want to talk about today. Uh, so what are we giving up? I think uh, I'm going to first talk about some five things that you're not giving up. Okay, four things. I got four things that you're not actually giving up. Uh, you're not giving up on what they owe you because you're never gonna get it. You're also not giving up on what they owe you because living somewhere else doesn't negate the fact that they still owe you. If reparations do get passed out, right, and you're still a citizen of the United States, because again, we're not talking about renouncing citizenship, we're just talking about adding in residency. If you're owed some reparations and your country 
decides to give you reparations, just because you have residency in another place would not forfeit your right to those reparations. So number one, you're not giving up what they owe you. They never gonna pay it. What, <laughs> the question that I really wanna ask you is, where, what is giving you that hope that you're gonna get those reparations? Where, what white people do you know? <laughs> the real question I have for you is what white people do you know who actually pay the debts? What has given you the, any inclination, any sincere belief that you're going to get something back from the people who have mastered not paying what they owe, not pulling their fair share? right? That was the whole point of slavery. That was the whole point of enslaving my people, your people. Uh, so I want to know what you expect. Real question, why do you have that hope? Okay, but number one, what we're not giving up is what they owe us. The second thing that you're not giving up is your voice. People sometimes say you can't leave the country because then you don't have access to a voice uh, about what happens in this country. That's not true. If you want to vote, you can still vote. When you live in another country and you have residence, you can still vote. Okay, I hope that clears that up. You're not giving up your voice. I also want to say that the 16% of black people cannot save the rest of this country. Black people in the United States of America who have some sense and some sense of decency, because you know I believe black people, we are, we are very, black women are the most decent people, the most humane people, right? The, the percentage of us that make up the country cannot save the rest of the country. It's a losing struggle. But if you want to keep your voice, keep your voice. Your, if your vote is your voice, I beg to differ. I think your money is your voice. Where you spend your money is your voice. I also think that your lack of vote is a more powerful voice than your vote. If you can understand taking a going on strike, if you can understand teachers going on strike or truck drivers going on strike, then you can understand people saying, I'm not participating in this system. OK. But you don't have to give up your voice just because you live in another country. Plenty of people still vote in the United States of America even when they live in another country, right? Absentee voting exists. Or you know what? Get on a plane and fly back home and vote if, it, if that's what you want to do. You're not giving up your voice by moving abroad. Third, third thing you're not giving up is citizenship, right? I've said that a few times. We're not talking about giving up citizenship. I wouldn't uh, renounce citizenship to the United States of America until my passport was useless. Once that US passport is no longer strong, right? Once you can no longer get into other countries easily, like you can when you have the US passport, then it might be time for a regular everyday people to start renouncing. But right now, when you need to fly back in the US to handle business, to see family and friends, you know, just visit from time to time, that passport is so powerful that it makes it worthwhile to hold on to it, I think. I can understand why people would not want to hold on to it. The US tax man is in your business, no matter where you live, as long as you're a citizen. I can understand why people would renounce, but I think for the everyday person, the passport is powerful enough right now that it's worth holding on to. I do think that there could be a time based on elections and stuff. There could be a time when the passport is totally useless. Then we'll go back and in this conversation. We'll think about it another, a, a, from another approach. But for right now, we're not talking about giving up citizenship. You can have residency in another country without re revoking citizenship to the United States of America. And the fourth thing on my list that you're not giving up by moving abroad is you're not giving up on the American dream, right? You're actually be get putting yourself in better position to achieve the quote unquote American dream, right? You're putting yourself in better position to achieve the things that you dream about for your life, the things that are so hard to get in the United States. The basic level of safety and security, the basic level of hu being treated like a human, right? Being treated with dignity and respect, that is a thing that black women are being, uh, are receiving by moving abroad. Right, a basic level of having a government who like takes care of the people who actually sees it as their um, job to improve the lives of the people. 
Sometimes when you go to another country and you find out they have universal health care, that is all, the, all you need to be radicalized. That's all you need to understand how much the United States government don't care about you, right? Don't care about you or your family. And to understand that there is a, there are some places where things work a little bit better or a whole lot better. People joke sometimes about Japan being in the future. Japan's not in the future. Japan is in the present. Uh, your country is in the, in the past. Your country is in the past with its infrastructure, with its commitment to people, commitment to education, commitment to health care. You're living in, in a different time or a different timeline or something. You can go to a place where you can just live better because you're in a different country. Like, you can go to a country where prisons for profit don't exist, right? Where health care is more about care than about profits, um, you can go to a country where people will value you as a person and not as a worker. When you are the descendant of enslaved people, it is really, really difficult in the United States to be treated as a full person. You are always treated like a person who is a worker, a person who is there to work. Now, the real gag is uh, that has bled over. It's not, no longer just black people or even just black and brown people who are treated like only workers. All people in the United States, except for the very rich, are treated like workers and like our lives are supposed to be dedicated to work. From childhood through until you are a senior citizen, your life is supposed to be committed to work. What you find when you don't live in the United States anymore is that this, this is a really American thing. When you go to other countries, you are expected to be a whole person. You are expected to engage in a full life. You're expected to spend time with your family. You're expected to have friends and hobbies and interests. You're expected to be able to carry on a conversation that is not related to work. In the United States, if you try to talk to people about something that's not work, they always bring it back to work. Because in the United States of America, people are workers first and last and in between. You can have a life where you can live while the American dream in another country. It's a little bit easier financially. I'm not going to say that all countries have such a great cost of living that you, it, you can make the leap and you're going to save thousands and thousands of dollars a year or a month, right? But I'm saying that it, it, there are places in the world where it is much more financially possible to live that American dream, but also it's much more in terms of peace of mind in terms of safety, you're much more likely to live out that dream that you have for your life if you leave the United States of America. So those are things that you're not giving up. So what are you actually giving up if you leave the United States of America, move abroad, like me and my homegirls, like a lot of the women in my community have done. I'm the co-founder of Exodus Summit, which right now is a community of 17,000 black women who are on the move, right? 17,000 black women who are making their plans or their exit strategies or who have already ha done the exodus. So what have they, what have we given up? By leaving the United States of America and living in a new country, we have given up on actively participating in the systems that have been created to destroy us. As long as you are actively participating, you're strengthening the system. And we have given up, we have opted out, and we have moved on to living a life where we no longer participate in our own destruction, in our own oppression. I have videos on this channel that talk about the specific places that people have gone to live better lives. Uh, people will always say, but there's racism everywhere, where there's anti-blackness everywhere, but there's colonialism everywhere. Absolutely. Anti-blackness is everywhere. Uh, racism is everywhere. Yes. Okay. But what you won't find everywhere are systems that were set up from the very foundation, systems that were set up from the very beginning to crush you. You can find a home, you can find a country, you can find a city in this world where the, everything you encounter was not set up specifically to oppress you. There are much more, there are many more socialist countries out there than we know, countries that are operating in more of a, an idea that if everybody does better, everybody does better, right? I'm not a scholar on capitalism, but I know that the transatlantic slave trade, which brought my people to the United States of America, was the, one of the catalysts for capitalism. 
right? We are doing it the worst or the best, however you want to see it. And there are places where it's not done like this, right? Where you're not viewed as a worker, where your life as a human has value, and where people who see you, a black person, don't feel any kind of way about you, right? Whereas in the United States, white people are always going to view us, the descendants of the enslavers are always going to view us as less than and are always gonna treat us as less than. You can go someplace where they don't have that baggage and where you don't have to carry that around every day. You don't have to brace yourself for every single interaction that you have with white people because you don't know exactly what they're gonna do and what they're gonna say, right? I told you, I'm in California right now. I'm visiting Yosemite National Park. I'm sharing a beautiful vacation rental. I wanted to go to a grocery store. I got in my car and drove to the closest market and it was such a small market in such a rural town that I didn't wanna go in, right? I didn't wanna go in. I didn't wanna deal with those rural white people. I have a hard time with the word rural, as you can see, but you know what I'm saying. I decided to drive to a, an actual like bigger city, like city, town, suburb, uh, where I knew that there would be a mix of people so that I wouldn't have to deal with the country, 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 rural white people out here. Even though California is a liberal state, I know the further you get away from cities and towns, bigger cities and towns, the more likely you are to run into people who feel emboldened uh, to be the worst. And so I made it my business to drive extra miles to go to a town, a bigger town, to go to their grocery store. That's not a consideration I have in Costa Rica. I spent half of my year in Costa Rica and I've done that for the last three years and I never have to think twice about where I set foot. I never have to think twice about walking out of a store with stuff in my hands. Uh, I, I get to put down the pressures of living in a country that was built on this foundation, and I get to live my life as a human person, being treated with human dignity and respect. I recommend that for you too, for you and for your family. I have videos on this channel that talk about where black women are going, uh, what countries and what cities inside of those countries have been um, like softer landings for black women or just places where black women can live out their dreams. Make sure that you, I'll, I'll link to the videos here and also in the description of this video. In the description of this video, I'm also going to link for the, to the wait list for Exodus Summit 2024. Exodus Summit 2024 is happening October 11th through 14th, 2024. It's all online. This is the fifth year we're hosting this conference. It's a conference where speakers come in, black women speakers come in to teach you how to leave the United States of America. This year, we're talking about a quick exit, how you, black woman, black family, can leave the United States of America before the next presidential inauguration. If this is a thing that you want to do, make sure that you are on the wait list for Exodus Summit, whether you're thinking seriously about it or you're just considering it for now, or you're just like daydreaming about it. Make sure that you're on the wait list for Exodus Summit 2024. The link is exodussummit.com 2024. Of course, I've linked to that in the description of this video, along with a few other videos that I think you'll be interested in about moving abroad. Uh, I've interviewed some quite a few black women on this channel who have done it. So you can hear from them and from their families about what it was like planning the move, executing the move, and now living a new life. I appreciate you so much for watching this video. Please take a second and hit the like button and share this video with a black woman you know who would be interested in moving abroad for a better life. And I'll see you next time. Bye.